Welcome to this new tutorial. We'll talk about psychoeducation and uh, uh, regarding anxiety disorders, so phobia, agoraphobia, uh, social phobia, uh, generalized anxiety disorder, um, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, it's in important to teach psychoeducation to your patient because if they understand what's going on in their brain, then they will feel more relaxed. When you know what's going on, you feel more serene. Um, so that's the idea. You teach the psychoeducation during the first, the very first session of therapy. I advise to uh, set up this session uh, in group uh, from four to eight patients. It's more efficient and you can, uh, they can benefit from the dynamic of the group. So during the first session, you teach uh, uh, hygienic measure or, or hygienic diet measure psychoeducation and relaxation. So psychoeducation comprise four models and today we'll see two of them. The two of them will be in the second session of treatment. So today we'll see in these two models, we we'll see the first one, which is the neurobiological model of gray or gray neurobiological model. So what is very important when you are in a group with your patient is to, make, to not take the position of a professor teaching to the student. Uh, it's uh, students. So you, you have to share uh, opinions. You have to ask for their opinions. You have to create an exchange. Uh, it's not a monologue, it's a dialogue. So in this case, have a look first at the model. As you can see, there is uh, several uh, steps, and we start with situation. So, the situation in which we're in, uh, the patient feels anxious or frightened or fearful. So, you have to ask them, so ask them directly the group what's an example of a situation where they feel anxious. So some, some, tell, some will tell you the subway or the plane of a dog, or of bridges, or, or dirty, uh, um, dirty garba garbages, for example, dirty bags, uh, of blood, etc. So they, they have to give you an example, and you create dialogue this way. Then you tell them, okay, next step is the assessment. So when you feel threatened in this situation, you make an assessment, your brain makes an assessment of the situation. And then once again you turn to your patient, you ask them, so in this situation, the subway, the plane, the dog, the dirty garbages, etc., what do you assess? What are you looking at in these situations? And they answer you. Oh yes, uh, uh, yes in the plane I'm looking at the doors and I, I'm so looking at the face uh, um, of a steward. Uh, oh yes, uh, in the supermarket, I'm looking at the face of the clients. And yes, the dog, I'm looking if it, if it has a leash or no leash. Um, yes, in the height, I'm looking at the height. I'm looking if there is a handrail. Uh, oh yeah, and I'm looking at if the blood is, is uh, recent or, or more black or less older, etc. So this way, okay, you have assessed the situation. This assessment is possible thanks to the BIS of a BIS system. So B-I-S, which is an acronym, which means Behavioral Inhibition System. This is a functional entity present inside the brain, which will induce, so this is what you said to your patient, which will induce the anxiety, which will rise awareness and also which will provoke the production of adrenaline. And then you ask your patient once again, when you feel anxious, what kind of symptoms do you exhibit? Ask your patient in the same idea that you need to create an exchange. And they will tell you, yes, sometimes when I feel anxious in the plane, I'm sweating. Oh, yes, I have difficulty breathing and, and I feel that there is some kind of strain in my throat. 
um, I feel oppressed, or yes, me, uh, I feel my heart is pounding fast and strong and perfect. So you say, okay, perfect. That's and then you, you explain to them is the symptoms you have expressed is exactly what the adrenaline is provoking. This is the effect. What you have described me is the effect of adrenaline. So, you have the first part of the assessment and you, if you want, you can also explain to them where the, bi the bias or the bis is located in their brain. So this um, functional entity which produce, which you provoke anxiety depend of several structure, which is the hippocampus, the frontal lobe, and the limbic system. Limbic system for emotion, frontal lobe for, emo so for regulation and planification, and uh, amygdala for the fear, and the hippocampus for the memory. Anyway, now we will uh, move to the next step. So, situation assessment and now a response is needed. So look at the model. You can see that there is the response. There is two kinds of response. This is the famous flight or fight system that we can hear sometime uh, on the news or on the TV. So once the patient has these symptoms, he will act and this act will be either to fight which means to contend with a situation, to confront with a situation, or to flee, so to avoid the situation and flee. And same thing, you ask your patient. So in this situation, in the lift, in front of a dog, in the plane, when you see blood, what do you do? And will tell you, often they will tell you, I avoid the situation. I take the stairs, I do not buy plane tickets, I run away from the dogs, I do not approach the blood. And you tell them then, you see, you are fleeing, you avoid the situation. Some might, might tell you, but yes, but me, I choose to fight. I confront the situation and I really force myself and I suffer, but I don't care. You have to explain to them that doing so is not useful for the treatment, because it's true. They will be exposed uh, to a, a tempting or anxiogenic situation or stressful situation, but in a very progressive manner and with a specific method that you will teach them and you can find in the tutorial. Uh, so trying to push oneself so hard is not useful at all, is not useful for the treatment because it's too rough, it's too abrupt, it will not, be, it will not create a positive effect. So once you have explained um, this to your patient, you have to, to really make them aware that this adrenaline, this bis or bias system in their brain is, was created by the evolution and is there for millennium, for thousands, for hundred thousands of years. It was created by the evolution, so anxiety and all this um, brain structure was not created to annoy the patients. It was created for what? You ask your patient, what, how anxiety is useful, for, is useful for human, for animals. And you ask them, or what's to create the exchange? And, uh, and then you explain to them, yes, uh, yeah, if I will tell you, yes, it's to make me aware, or, uh, yes, it's to make me feel my body, uh, no, no, no. And then someone will tell you the right answer. Yes, to protect. Yes, that's it. You have to make them understand this is very important. You can repeat this sentence several times. You have to explain to them with this model that the anxiety is there to protect them. Anxiety is a protection mechanism for survival purposes. Because you have to tell your patient that in the past, 20,000 years ago, where uh, did humans uh, live at that time? 
and you ask them, you ask your patient, and they're really in the forest, of the jungle, of the tundra, they, they live the, in very hostile environment. And they need, as a consequence, they need to have a system which makes them quite aware of every, every threatening stimuli, so they can react quite fast in order to survive. Well, this system is still present in our mind, in our brain, because our society have evolved, have evolved faster than our biology. We still have brain made for style environment, not for modern environment. You already have to make them explain, and then you tell them that if, they, if we were living in a cave, all your patients will be the keeper, because they are very aware of the environment and they could help protecting, and, um, protecting the cave and the tribe, because they are very sensitive to what's going on, what's the threatening cues. So I explained to them that this, this is very important, to, the anxiety is important to protect uh, um, the patient to protect the human, to protect the individuals. Then they will ask, you can ask them, okay, now you know about the anxiety, but it can protect uh, someone, it can protect you, it's a protect, protective mechanism, but what about the symptoms? How, how the fact that sweating and having the, uh, the heart pounding fast is useful? You have to make them understand, so you ask them how, we, how it is useful, these symptoms. Oh yes, I don't know, uh, sweating, it's maybe it's for bacteria or for toxin. No, no, no. And then you explain that, for example, sweating is made, was made, is, using, is used to decrease the, sun, the central temperature of the body, because we are human and we need to have a constant uh, temperature, which is 37 um, Celsius degree. Uh, I don't know about Fahrenheit, so I have to make the calculation. Um, and because of that, we need to have uh, a cooling system. This is the sweating. And the heart, why, when you are anxious, is it pounding so strong and so fast? What's the function of the heart? And I told you, oh yes, uh, uh, I don't know, it's to make us aware or. Uh, it's to, to help us having blood, uh, and uh, it's for oxygen? Yes, it's for oxygen. We we'll tell them, yes, the, the, the heart is pounding faster and stronger in order to provide more blood to the muscle, and which means to provide more sugar and to provide more oxygen to the muscle. Because if they are in front of a bear or have to hunt a mammoth, like our ancestor did, they will need a lot of energy. So if they have to fight or if they have to flee, in both cases they need a lot of energy. So they need oxygen and sugar. That's why the heart is pounding faster, because the muscle needs more energy. So you have to tell them very clearly that the symptoms that they feel during when they are anxious is a preparation for the action or action preparation. So it's to prepare them for the action, which is to fight or to flee. And it will give them the awareness, thanks to the anxiety, and thanks to adrenaline, the strength, in fact, to, to protect themselves. And at the end, you ask them for an example. And this can give you a very superhuman strength, like superhero, for example, and it could save life, for example, give me an example, ask your patient, give me an example where anxiety has saved a life. So think about, oh yes, I heard about something, oh, me too, this woman in Canada, etc. And you explain to them, so uh, this example, as you can see, uh, this was uh, an American woman, she, she was a mother, and while she was in a garden, uh, her child, a uh, child was a um, son, was repairing a Chevrolet Impala of the 60s, 1960s. And it was under the car, but the system, the frame which was made to make the car higher, uh, was broken and the car 
started to crush the child, started to crush his child or his son. When she saw it, so she see the model, she assessed the situation, my child, the car, it's heavy. So, the, uh, so there was the assessment, it's heavy, the car, and then the action, so there was uh, adrenaline production, she feel her heart is pounding fast, and then she, thanks to the adrenaline, thanks to the sugar and to the oxygen, thanks to this, the anxiety which prepare, which uh, help her to react quite fast, and the symptoms which we prepare for the action, she was able to, to um, carry the car, to raise the car, to raise the car, and this way the child, her child, was saved. This was an example which was reported, as you can see, in the newspaper. So really, anxiety can save a life. Well, that was it for the... Uh, so the idea of this model is to, sh to explain to them the mechanism in the brain and to show how useful can be, in fact, useful. That's it for this uh, model. We'll see the next model in the next tutorial. Take care.